Welcome to Cheltenham. Regency splendour, glorious gardens, fashionable living since the spa waters were discovered in the 18th century. And this week, we're looking to buy a piece of that. We love a challenge, but this sounds complicated. Two homes in one property. A house where landlord and tenant share a roof. But not a front door. This week's house hunter is anaesthetist Ian Godfrey. At the moment, he lives in a beautiful basement flat in the leafy Cheltenham suburb of Pitville. Deciding to move was one of the hardest things, really, because there's nothing wrong with my flat. It's a very good size. The rooms are all nice and large. House prices, certainly in this area, especially in Cheltenham, have been shooting up recently, and I suddenly realised that if I don't move fairly soon, I'm never going to be able to afford this to jump from my flat up to this sort of period house that I'd like to live in. The only way he can afford to make that jump is to buy a house with a flat he could rent out, meaning he could borrow an extra hundred grand. And he's already found his tenant, best mate James. Hi James, how's your whole life? Oh, really good to know. James lives in a rented flat uh, and said he'd be keen to rent off me, which is brilliant because it means I don't have to find a tenant uh, and I get someone that I know and trust. I think we'd have to have separate front doors. I don't really want to know what James is getting up to most of the time and I'm sure he doesn't really want to know what I'm doing. Ian's been looking for a new home for more than a year now. He's not one to compromise, as James knows only too well. What would appear to be fantastic houses, just lose it. You know, the period features are missing, um, and that, that could lose his interest in it completely. When it comes to location, I am quite fussy. He's pernickety. Um, <laughs> he's got, he's, he knows what he wants. Then there's the tricky question of the car. In Regency times, they weren't big into garage building, so... I don't really expect to find a house with a garage, but if I did, it would be a huge plus. So what kind of property does Cheltenham offer Ian? It's packed with Regency homes, but not many come up for sale. When they do, even terrace houses fetch up to £800,000. Let's see what Ian has to spend. Uh, up to about 450000 for the right house. At the moment, I live in Pitville here, and really I'd like to stay within 10 or 15 minutes walk of the town centre, just so I can get home in the evenings on foot. Let's get on with it then. Our first house is close both to Ian's current home and the town centre. It's an end of terrace which has been recently renovated by a developer. This house in Albion Street has four bedrooms and a separate two-bed basement flat. It's on the market at £445,000. Ian, we've got a first floor drawing room of fantastic proportions, as you can see. It's a yeah. fantastic room. Great big sash windows, you can't get better than that. This is true, plenty of lights, great view of the ring road. Now, there is a considerable amount of noise from the road. Yeah. There's no getting away from it. Personally, I think you should replace these sash windows with double glazed sash windows. I hasten to add, no, 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 before yeah. you make that face, you can get amazing double glazed wooden sash windows where you hardly know they're double glazed at all. They look exactly the same as this. You just have two panes here. The cornice is beautiful. Yeah. But it has some little missing teeth. Yeah. If I was doing this myself, I would spend a little bit of money in having a mould made yeah. of those bits and just having new bits slotted in. I reckon it probably cost you £250-£300 for the entire cornice. This house isn't short on space. There are 11 rooms, including two bathrooms. Then there's the basement flat, which has two bedrooms and currently the only kitchen. But the developer would put a second kitchen upstairs or knock money off. The house is absolutely what I want, the actual house. If I could move it somewhere else, then it would be perfect. God, if I had a pound for every time someone had said that to me. Absolutely. So right on track with the house, let's see if we can improve on location. Our second house is in Portland Street, a more residential area. Again, it's a recently developed Regency Terrace with four bedrooms, this time with a one-bedroom basement flat. It's on the market for £395,000. I must admit, the first thing you notice when you come in is the fireplace, which is very contemporary. Very contemporary. Oh, I actually really like it, which surprised me, because, I mean, I, I love period features, yeah. usually, but it doesn't look out of place in this room. There is a very modern feel, but plenty of period features have also been restored. Look, the shutters have got the original locks. It's a very secure feeling when you just hear that, oh, click. Now, look, here we are. Oh, coming wow. through to another spectacular room. Same fireplace. Brilliant. Well, it's a very smart dining room. But out here is actually what really sets this house apart. Oh. We, we very much took on board the requirement of, of good and secure parking. Remote control doors there, parking for three cars. 
That is brilliant, actually. Yeah. And your kitchen. Lovely, lovely flow to this house. Oh. It's nice. It's very nice. It's a good quality finish. I notice yeah. there are decent quality appliances. Yeah. It's not a particularly expensive kitchen, but it has been fitted extremely well. You'll notice that the blue and brown is a rather pretty combination, matching a certain... You were made to go with the house. <laughs> Good reason not to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> like so many developed properties, it's all magnolia walls and beige carpet, giving the buyer a blank canvas. Second bedroom here, and then your master bedroom. And what master we have room. got is what this room wouldn't have had in the old days. Oh, that's brilliant. An ensuite shower. Now, obviously, Regency houses wouldn't have had bathrooms. And it is difficult to find places to put bathrooms without losing that feel. But I think that's been very cleverly done. The basement flat's got a sleek, minimalist kitchen and a light, airy living room. So what's Ian's verdict? It's a very definite maybe. It's, it's nice. It, the only thing that counts against it is possibly the location on the main, the main road out of Cheltenham. Otherwise, I really can't fault her. So a better location, but still not good enough for Ian. Let's see if we can find what he's looking for a little further out of town. We're taking him to Fairview, a much quieter area. This detached villa in St Anne's Road has three bedrooms. There's no flat, just a studio room in the garden. £350,000 is the asking price. That's a hundred grand below budget, so plenty to spare for developing that studio. It looks like it's had that sort of spray-on concrete long-term treatment. It has had over. that sort of what they call fake pebble That's dash. It's expensive, yeah. it's time consuming, but you can rectify the problem. And how about the room itself? The proportions are great. I'm used to rooms that are more this size and shape. That's the replica of the front room. Currently used a formal dining. That's lovely, yeah. And in the back of the house, very, very contemporary oh, wow. kitchen again. They have done quite a lot of work to update this house. You'll see over there there's a door which is still in the process of being stripped. <laughs> yes. Now, Ian, for me, this is this house's major attraction. Oh, wow. You could restore that fireplace, sweep the chimney, put in a hearth, and have a real fire in your bathroom. There's really only two and a half bedrooms in this house, but there's a big attic up there and a real opportunity to convert up into it. If you're thinking about converting an attic, the first decision that you've got to take is whether it's going to be a habitable room, like a bedroom, or whether it's just going to be storage. The opportunity of creating genuine value is in making another bedroom up there. But there's a number of important building regulations that you'd need to meet. Firstly, you'd need to strengthen the floor joists. You'd also need to make sure there was a safe route of escape in case there was a fire. And you would need to be able to stand up in at least a third of the space up there. So, have we managed to get the location right this time? Fairview is one of the up-and-coming areas of Cheltenham. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly, the local pub has been converted into a trendy wine bar and brasserie, mm -hmm. uh, which has got to be a good sign of, of what's happening in the area. I've seen that look before. I know what that means. So, don't you agree with me? It's wonderful. Detached house. Beautiful big garden, lots of space. But He's not convinced, I don't no. think. He hasn't said a lot in him. No, he likes that Regency feel, and you don't get it in this house. So it's not just about the right location. That Regency feel is a must as well. We think our next house ticks all the boxes, but it comes at a cost. It's in Pitville, where Ian lives now, and it's a location he likes. It's also well positioned, right opposite the park gates. The house in Clarence Road has four bedrooms and is on at £349,995. There's also a three-bedroom basement flat for sale separately at £169,950. That's a total price of nearly £520,000, but with work still to do, there should be plenty of scope for negotiation, particularly if Ian buys both properties. This is the biggest house we've got to show you, by far, yep. and it's probably got a more interesting history in terms of its association with Cheltenham. Right. But all of that is irrelevant unless it gives you that feeling. OK, I'd live not a million miles from here, yeah, well, so yeah, exactly. I know the house well, I walk past it. I have done for five years. The location of this house is worse than the other houses I've seen in that that is one of the most busy one-way roads in Cheltenham. That is the main pedestrian route out of Cheltenham at night. It looks like an absolutely beautiful house. Yeah. But I don't think I could ever live here in this particular location. You have got 
Petville Park there, a beautiful house opposite. So visually, it's probably one of the best locations that we've had. Mm -hmm. But Ian's just not budging. Look at the space Ian's giving up in the main bedroom. Biggest bedroom we've seen. It's 20 foot by just over 15. Is that proportions or what? It would do me very nicely. And this would be my dressing room. What do you make of this whole wall full of suits down there? Wonderful. Little cupboard for Kirsty's shoes and we'd be away. Looked at on paper, it's what he wanted. But he knows the streets of Cheltenham like the back of his hand. He's not settling for anything that's, that's not perfect. I don't blame him, he's spending a lot of money. No house is 100% perfect, yeah? Mm -hmm. Everybody has to have a push, something which is forcing them to move, and Ian doesn't have that. It's a great flat that he lives in. I don't think our challenge this week is to find him something. It's to <laughs> find him something which is so much better, so much more seductive, and really has that pull which will get him out of his current flat. But Ian's looking for an investment as well as a home. Renting a room or flat's a good way to up your buying power. But always work out the initial cost to ensure the rental income will cover them. Invest in quality fittings, or it'll be false economy as repairs are your responsibility. You'll need to tell your mortgage lenders, and as any profit is classed as extra income, you'll have to tell the taxman.